Setters, Gardeners, and Cooks. My name is Jennifer. Welcome to Miles Away Farm or welcome back. Thanks for joining me in my kitchen. Today I am making a maple glazed turkey meatball. And we've been raising turkeys here on this farm for probably 10 years or so. And we raise heritage breeds turkeys. So they take a very long time to mature. They're not like the white breasted turkeys that you get in the grocery store, which mature in about three months. These guys take about six months to mature. So they're not super economical to raise, but I keep them around for the entertainment value if nothing else. They're just so much fun to have on the farm. And they eat a slightly different diet in terms of bugs and insects and things than a regular chicken would. And so they're having a different impact on the landscape. And then the females, because they're a heritage breed, they will reproduce themselves. So they will try to make their own nests and hatch out eggs. And I would say we have about a 40% success rate with that. It happens every year and inevitably a lot of times some predator either finds the nest or finds the turkey mama turkey on the nest. And so it isn't always successful, but every once in a while she manages to pull off hatching out a bunch of eggs and they tend to have a nest of 10 to 15 eggs before they start sitting. And so if they hatch out turkeys, it's usually quite a few. If I can capture them at the time, I will try to put them in what we call our brooder room, which is just an old horse stall that is enclosed. And so I will try to get her in there with the baby so that they can be raised in a safe environment until they're six to eight weeks old. Turkeys, their entire instinct for survival is to hold still they are very well camouflaged. And so if they're vulnerable and on the ground and a predator finds them, they tend to find all of them and they get picked off one at a time. We did just find a female turkey. She was the oldest hen that I had who started a nest and we have a resident local fox in the area and I think he found her plus the eggs. And the area was that she was in was difficult to escape because it was somewhat fenced. And so I think she just got caught and no more eggs, of course, as well. They will lay eggs in my chicken coop, and I actually have a mama turkey sitting on a couple of eggs right now. The problem with that is the other turkeys and the other chickens continue to try to lay eggs in that same nest, and so you end up with all of these different eggs at different ages, and that becomes a huge mess. And then, you know, everybody's getting in and out and the mama turkey is getting up and down a lot and you end up with broken eggs and then those smell. And so it isn't really all that successful to raise them in the coop with the other chickens unless you can somehow isolate them where they're not getting encroached on by all the other birds. And I've tried to move nests when I found them in the coop to a different spot that's more safe. They don't like that. As soon as you move the nest, even when it's in the dark, in the middle of the night, they tend to just start over. They don't like being moved. Anyway, that's the saga with turkeys. But needless to say, every year we butcher a few turkeys. We'll butcher less than one-year-old birds, usually about six-month-old birds for Thanksgiving. And then we often will butcher quite old Tom, so a bird that is two to three years old, and then just take the meat off of the carcass and grind it. Um, because at that point it is so rubbery and old that it is not gonna be good eating for like a roasted turkey or you know smoked turkey breast or something like that. The meat is just not all that. Um, tender, but it's lovely when it's ground. And so it's a great way to use up turkey that is older. And I've kind of acquired over the years quite a few ground turkey recipes, including turkey meatloaf, turkey patties, and a couple of different recipes for turkey meatballs. It turns out I already actually have a recipe on YouTube for a teriyaki turkey meatball, but this is a recipe by Hank Shaw. And Hank Shaw is kind of one of my personal heroes. I really love him. He started a website many years ago when blogs were all the rage called Hunter Angler Gardener Cook. And on it, he had all kinds of deep dives into really interesting subjects. I'm not a hunter. I have no problem with hunting. It's just not something I've personally grown up with or done. I did used to work for a fish and game office, and so I was around it a lot. I am a little bit of an angler, but I'm definitely a forager and I'm definitely a gardener. And his take on things was always just really interesting. He has a deep curiosity about the world and a lot of introspection, and he's just always 
has interesting takes on things that are different from the way I would normally see somebody treat them. And then his recipes are also very worldly. He pulls from pretty much every cuisine imaginable. And I love that because I love eating things that are outside of the norm. And so he's got Ethiopian recipes. He's got lots and lots of Latin recipes, Mexico recipes. He's got, you know, middle of America, Ohio kind of recipes. He's got a lot of Asian recipes. So really fun, just really interesting. So I have several of his cookbooks. Interestingly, this recipe is not in his cookbooks. It's just on his website. Um, I'll link to it below, but I wanted to just tout if you're looking for recipes, if you do know a hunter or if you are a hunter and you're looking for recipes for what to do with wild game, he has, I think, four different cookbooks and then there's a fifth one in the works. But this is one of them, which is pheasant quail and cottontail so it's what to do with upland birds there are quite a few turkey recipes in here and there's also buck buck moose which is you know what to do with venison what to do with elk what to do with antelope etc what i find though is that his recipes translate beautifully to the homestead so if you have a domestic sheep or if you have a domestic goat or you have domestic cow or you have obviously domestic rabbit chicken turkey duck his recipes translate beautifully. And so I've just learned to rely on his recipes, even though I'm not personally a hunter. This is one of his recipes. One of the motivations for this, it just looked really good. It's maple glazed um, turkey meatballs, but it calls for quite a bit of Worcestershire sauce. And I have a recipe on this website for homemade Worcestershire sauce. And in that, I talk about the fact that I go through like one bottle of Lee and Perrin's Worcestershire sauce in the course of about three or four years. So it is not an ingredient that I go through very quickly. And I made a quart plus of Worcestershire sauce. So I have a lot of Worcestershire sauce and I saw this recipe and it called for a third cup of Worcestershire sauce and I thought, perfect. I have a use for all of that Worcestershire sauce that I made. So it's pretty much equal parts Worcestershire and maple and then a little bit of tomato paste to kind of round it out and then you just cook it down until it's thick. It is delicious. Hank's original recipe calls for these meatballs to be deep fried. I didn't really think that was necessary and I don't generally deep fry anything. And so I just pan fried these and they were wonderful to the point that I think I've made this recipe now three times. So really good over rice with a stir fried vegetable, really good on a salad with different things, or you could do it as an appetizer and put toothpicks in it for when you had people over. Lots of different ways to eat these. It is definitely one of the best turkey meatball recipes I have come across really delicious maple glazed turkey meatballs. Let's get started. So this recipe couldn't be easier. You start out with an egg. I love that this is all in one pan and that there's no additional chopping. Beat your egg well so that everything's well mixed. And then we're gonna add a cup of breadcrumbs and these are just store-bought breadcrumbs, but they could be homemade. And then we're also adding quarter teaspoon of ginger, half teaspoon of black pepper, half teaspoon of onion powder, quarter teaspoon of poultry seasoning, a teaspoon of salt, and a quarter cup of milk. And that milk is basically just gonna reconstitute those breadcrumbs and create something called a panade, which is one of the reasons that meatloaf is tender and meatballs are tender. And then for our glaze, we need a half a cup of maple syrup, a third of a cup of homemade Worcestershire sauce, or obviously store-bought is fine here. and then two teaspoons of tomato paste. And ironically, this tomato paste is actually also a Hank Shaw recipe, and I hope to show you guys that this summer. And then hot sauce to taste. And then I'm just stirring that to break that tomato paste up a little bit so that it's not a big wad. And then we're just gonna cook that on a back burner of the stove until it's reduced and sticky. And then I completely somehow missed filming the dishing out of the meatballs, but it's pretty straightforward. They're just about a tablespoon a piece. I used a disher for some of these and then some of them I just hand rolled, but basically around a tablespoon, tablespoon and a half a piece. And then I fried these in a couple tablespoons of avocado oil. And once they're done on one side, I'm just hand flipping everything over and I'm really looking for a crust here. So I don't want these to just be cooked. I want them to have a nice brown crust on them. 
And because these are small, these cook really fast. I probably got this pan on like medium high heat and I would say 10 minutes tops for the cooking time. They're gonna get done through the center quite quickly just because they're not very big. And then we're gonna pour our reduced glaze right over the top of those meatballs in the pan. And that pan's still hot, so it's gonna reduce it even further and everything is gonna get heated through and just be sticky and delicious. And then as I mentioned, we served this this night with some broccoli salad and a chipotle white bean casserole. And so that was the first night we ate these. We also ate them on an Asian salad, which was delicious. So lots of different ways that you can go with this. But yeah, this recipe is definitely a keeper tribe. Thanks for watching. If you like this kind of content, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, leave me a comment and share. I have new content coming out every week.